Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're going to be reviewing the Cadillac XT4. This one is a sport. Before we get in this video, I'm going to give a huge shout out and link you to the Jerry Center Cadillac here in Salt Lake for giving us some time with this XT4. I'll include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. I'll also include a link to my car buying guide. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged 2 liter 4 cylinder that goes through a 9 speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 23 around town and then 28 on the highway with power outputs, being 235 horsepower and then 258 pound feet of torque. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Starting with the hood, it raises up towards the center, which I think is pretty sharp. And I really like this new headlight design. I'm actually pretty fond of it. It's cool looking with what they've done here. I mean, look at that. Fancy. Grill's all blacked out. You got the Cadillac emblem. It's all blacked out at the bottom too. Overall, it's a good looking car. Now on the side here, our turn wheel setup is 235 by 60 by 18 in the front and over in the rear. You can see here at the wheels, you got the silver mixed with the gray trim. And then I like the fender flare here being all blacked out. You can see the rest of the trim there too. You also have the silver Cadillac emblem there on the side. And then take a few steps back. Here's a side profile. And this of course leads us to the key fob. We have our lock and unlock function, remote start, opening for the hatch. Got the Cadillac emblem there on the back. Press that a couple times and that'll pop her open. And we've got quite a bit of storage space. So this is Cadillac's smaller SUV, right? This is similar in size to like a Chevy Equinox, but I mean, it's still pretty darn practical. Cargo cover is built in, which is pretty cool. Press that and that'll lower the hatch right back down. See the 350T badge? Doesn't mean what it used to because we got a two liter four cylinder. Anyways, look at the light design there. I think that's pretty interesting. And then I like the squared off exhaust tips too, but there's the rest of the rear. Kiel Century, which is nice, but popping in, got this like blue stitching across and then you can see the soft touch down below, very premium looking. That's kind of cool, got like the carbon fiber print. I don't know if that's real carbon fiber or not. Here are the seats. Nice trim all down the center. Legroom back here, it's pretty solid. Got a storage pocket. We've got some vents here in the rear, heated seats, USB ports as well. Oh, I noticed these are perforated. That's another solid part. Uh, and then headroom, it does kind of slope down a little bit, but it's pretty good overall. And this leads us up front. So again, you've got all the soft touch trim here and down below, and then same thing with the you know, carbon fiber strip. Memory seats, all the window controls, front to automatic. The mirrors power fold in. They also have blind spot monitoring. And here's the front seat. Perfect it all down the center. Ooh, massage function, but you got all the adjustments too. Nice looking pedals, and then really nice trim here on the dash. Now take a look at the steering wheel. It's got pretty solid trim all around. It is perforated on either side. Paddle shifters there on the back. And then we do have nice finishes on some of the controls here. The front, like the volume controls, and the voice command on the other side. And here's kind of a better look at the perforated section. And then nice little stocks there on the back in normal fashion. Big digital gauge cluster here in the center, which I'll show you a little animation of what's happening with the drive line there at the bottom. And then this is actually a touch screen, just like in the Escalade here on the side to change what the center screen shows. So they're going kind of future fancy with this. Now we do have a pretty good camera system with this. You've got some different viewpoints that you can see with it. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system itself, again, it's a newer unit that GM has in a bunch of their cars, but it responds quickly. It's got some shortcut I wouldn't call them buttons, but shortcut tab on the screen. It's a good way to put it. This is interesting. It's got like kind of suede right there below the screen. You can see the stitching. It's kind of an interesting design. I mean, you got to make this work with this giant setup here. Also, heads up display. Dual zone climate with heated and ventilated seats. And then this is cool. <laughs> got a nice storage area inside. Shifter here for the nine speed. Some cup holders. Got analog controls for the infotainment system. So if you don't use a touchscreen, you don't have to. And you drive mode slash drive line select. So you can switch from all wheel drive to two wheel drive just by pressing this button and switching between the different modes. You also have your little auto stops and everything. 
wireless phone charging pad in pretty good space overall. Like the trim on top, which is nice. And then if you guys running glove box, that's pretty normal. Camera rear view mirror. And then we do have a big center front top. Here's a quick look at the window sticker. You can see 2025 XT4 Sports. Total MSRP, $52,005. And let's see how it performs. Oh, let us set off in the XT4. This is will show you guys the beauty of the camera system. <laughs> Just kidding. It does do the seat vibrate thing though. Some of you might not like that. <laughs> when you get close to something, uh, instead of the parking sensor going beep, 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 the seat vibrates to let you know that you're about to hit something. So this is a cool little car. I'm in the, uh, let me make sure, yeah, two-wheel drive mode right now. Let's see how this feels. Interesting. And that is something that I do like about this is the fact that you can switch between two-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. I know it is a front-wheel drive based crossover and so some people might not like that compared to a, you know, rear-wheel drive based one. But it still performs well. And most people that buy cars like this, they don't care about sporty driving. What do they care about? Luxury, comfort, how it looks, how the interior looks, feels. All right, that's what's that's what's important. Not about how much you can step the back end out. Right? That's never going to happen with one of these. It's a Cadillac. Well, not I shouldn't say with the Cadillac brand because you know the black wings are crazy that you can definitely step the back end out. But with these Cadillac SUVs, they're more about luxury. So it's got great torque. I can actually pop it into the all-wheel drive mode. See how that feels different. That was interesting. It kind of tracked there a little bit. And this road is slanted some, but some cars track more than others. You know, it's going to depend on weight, tire width, axle setup. I mean, this is just independent suspension. So, not too bad. And I do like Cadillac's interiors. It seems like they've chosen materials that hold up better over time. And I... I think this is something that's gonna become more appealing to people as time goes on. Because what's really nasty is when you buy a car and within a few thousand miles, items show a lot of wear. You know, like this here, for example, or like the steering wheel. It's it's just, it's really unappealing. It's like, I spent how much on this car and it's already showing signs of degradation. That's not cool. So, ah, uh, we got a train coming through. That ain't gonna happen, folks. That ain't gonna happen. So we're gonna go through here. Yeah, torque is great. smooth really enjoy how this drives zoom zoom and yeah, transmissions nice that was a good snap that was crisp oh that's the sport mode does that change anything Eh, it makes it a little bit more responsive. It's not as big of a difference. So, no, we don't need off-road mode. I don't think the Cadillac dealership would like that. <laughs> I put your car in off-road mode. Why would you do that? Why do you think? To come full circle, I like the X-T4 a lot. This is a really nice luxury uh, crossover. It's got a lot. It's got a lot going for it, if you ask me. It looks good. It's got good power. It drives well, and 
yeah, I mean, it, it gets good fuel economy too. So it's just a nice little crossover. Like one of my friends, uh, he's uh, retired for a few years and him and his wife are looking for a new car and they got the previous generation of this. And I asked him why he got this. And for all the reasons I said, he said, we, we like the looks of it. Uh, it drove well, it gets pretty good fuel economy and you can just service it at a Chevy dealership if you want, right? <laughs> So like it, it just has it has all that stuff. It's 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 easy, right? And the sizing was great. So yeah, just nice setup. But let me know what you think Ugh. about the XT4.